what we're looking at here is inside the nose of the Chinook there's a pulley system the one that came with it was a very small pulley very cheap little thing I replaced it with this larger wheel uh, this thing going around it uh, if you can see it here this is a bungee cord it's stretchy that hooks on to these cables the ends of the cables that are attached to the rudder pedals what that does is it keeps the pedal and the cables tight pulling it this way uh, uh, if you just had a straight bungee cord on any one of these cables and just had one bungee on each cable and that thing was to break uh, what that would do would be pull the other rudder pedal with a good bungee on that pull that this way they have one cable or one bungee that goes around this pulley and attaches onto the ends of the rudder cables here. Uh, the reason for this little, I think I can show you that here, this little standoff is so that it pulls evenly around the cable. I was, I thought well, if you just put it on there straight it it kinda puts a little bit of a bind on the cable and I just thought it's more mechanically correct to have this little standoff here to hook the bungees onto. But that was my idea. But the thing is that with this pulley system on here that is going to be fail safe as far as anything happening to this bungee because it won't pull the opposite cable down to the floor the only purpose for keeping a little tension on them cables is so this uh, the rudder pedal itself uh, does not you know if you took your foot off of it the, the rudder pedal could flop down to the floor so although I don't think it would go all the way down but anyways uh, that's what the purpose of the bungee is to keep a little tension on those rudder cables and keep these uh, pedals up off the floor uh, sometimes I fly without my feet on the rudder pedals because it I got it trimmed so it goes fairly straight uh, at a cruise speed a certain cruise speed it'll go fairly straight without my feet on the pedal so uh, if you get tired of your legs being straight you can take them off there but uh, anyways uh, what I'm do what I've just done is replaced this bungee on here with a new one uh, it looks like when I stretched it I could put a little bit of black paint on there the black paint is there to prevent reflections in the uh, in the Lexan of the thing so that's what I'm doing there the other thing I'm doing every once in a while somebody will try to move this thing backwards or swing the tail around really tight and then move it backwards anyways what it can do is mangle up these springs back here which are just uh, screen door springs a lot of people got these hanging on their house uh, I exchanged these put a little bit heavier springs on there but for somebody that's wondering about these springs uh, I tried replacing them and eliminating them with just a solid aluminum tube to see if it could be hooked up without springs it works fine on grass but if you come into pavement the minute that tail wheel there hits the pavement oh baby does that give you a, a lurch if there's any kind of crosswind and that tail wheel isn't just straight uh, you feel quite a quite a jerk in the tail when it hits so I decided that wasn't such a good idea so I keep I'm keeping the springs on there I think that's a good thing uh, the little round disc that you see here is a piece of aluminum that's just to kind of act as a fender in case the tail wheel throws up rocks or something you can see it gets dirty back there from land and grass and stuff so but that's the purpose of that and every year there's a a cotter pin here and when you do your annual inspection you want to make sure you take that cotter pin out and slide this tail wheel assembly off and grease up that that tube right there that it swivels on uh, particularly up here I mean this this is what what the bearing surface is here is on here is 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 what the load is being taken and the tail wheel is quite heavy I mean there's a lot of weight on this tail wheel in fact I can't lift the back end of this plane I can't pick it up myself anymore that's another reason why I gotta get rid of it I just I can't lift it anymore 
But if you have two people in it, uh, or intend to take a passenger, I'd lubricate these real good. And even during the season, you know, I spray a little WD-40 or uh, Tri-Flow or something like that on there to lubricate that a little bit because the grease will get mixed with dust and stuff and it gets kind of sticky. And then, then it doesn't steer quite as well, especially if you got two people in it. So uh, if you ever have any trouble steering it, you know, grease this up because it's the weight on this little wheel that's making it difficult to turn. Uh, other than that, you can see this right here is kind of mangled. And that is caused by somebody trying to back it up and it wants to rotate this wheel around this way. Well, once it goes past center, which it can do, it's really pulling on these cables and stretching the spring and it mangles these uh, wires in there. However, they've never come loose or broke or anything like that. I had no problem. These springs work in compression rather than tension, and I kind of like that idea, so I don't have to worry so much about that spring breaking. Uh, and uh, I've, I've never had anything like that happen. And while you're at it, you can lubricate this up too. This is the end of the rudder post, but it doesn't really have the load that the tail wheel does. Uh, at least on this plane. The way they made them originally, it does. It's a it's a real real bad way to do that. So, uh, Anyways, if it gets mangled up like this, just take and re-bend your springs. You can straighten this out. This is soft material here. There's no problem at all straightening that wire out. But it's the same as on a screen door. It's the same idea. And it's probably good that those wires will will bend like that. One thing I should show you is uh, this little handle here comes with the airplane. This is how you move the thing backwards and pull it into the hangar. It's quite easy to do with this. You can pull the plane backwards easily by pulling it by the tail wheel. And the end of it there clamps on the, the tail wheel axle and there's a spring on it there that, uh, that holds those two things together. So it's pretty easy to, to put on and take off. But that is how you move the plane in the hangar backwards.